Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Two Legs, a Paul McCartney podcast. We are mainly a Paul McCartney solo podcast talking about all things MACA. This is episode number 243. Uh, my name is Andy Nichols, and I'm one of the co-hosts of Two Legs. And joining me today is the other co-host and co-founder of Two Legs, and that is Mr. Tom Hunyadi. Good evening, Tom. Good evening, Mr. Nichols. Good to see you, as always. And We've been um, busy, man. We've been busy for a minute. Yeah. You know, we're anticipating something maybe happening soon. We, you never know. We're, uh, we got a little free time. So going live a couple times over the last week, which is, <laughs> uh, which is, you know, a little rare lately. But, uh, like I said, we're going to try Fun. to incorporate that a little bit more. But, uh, it's good to be back. And, uh, how are you? I'm doing well. And, um, things are heating up, you know, in official McCartney world. In not so official McCartney world, which is the topic of today's show, but before we get to that, right. um, we're going to go over the news and kick up uh, some things over to Tom. He had an update for us. Tom, go ahead. Yeah, well, just a couple, a uh, couple deaths, uh, just to report uh, in the Beatles world or Beatles connection world. I mean, one being um, John Sinclair, as we know, was immortalized by uh, John Lennon in the song "John Sinclair." Um, he died of heart failure at a- eighty-two. Uh, here in Michigan, and uh, we all know that you know, what he was given exactly as the song goes. He was given ten years for two joints, and uh, then in was it seventy one, seventy two? They did the uh, little show here in, uh, in Michigan, Arbor. where yeah, and our and exactly, and um, uh, I think the following year in seventy two, he was released, um, and only serving I think three or four years uh, of the uh, the the initial ten, so um that happened uh so rest in peace john also rest in peace to jerry conway now that may might not sound familiar but he was the drummer on the mcgear album and very close to uh joining joining wings he died of Lou Gehrig's disease at 76 now he played like i said he played drums on the mcgear album but not all of it because we do know for these the track leave it we know denny sywell was the drummer for that track so uh rest in peace jerry and um you know two more connections to the uh to the solo beatles or beatles however you want to say it that uh Mm -hmm. that you know that group just keeps shrinking and shrinking it seems every year that's why these books that we read these official books are become more important as time wears on because And that's why we, you know, it's so great that they're written and researched well because, as as you mentioned, people are passing on, and that's going to be the yeah. recorded word, history, whether it's Lewis and yeah. Parazzi, Cozen, Sinclair. Yeah. These are the books, you know, so we're all not going to be here forever, so these books will be. So that's correct. 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 What else now, is going on? Uh, uh, that's it, really. Um, unfortunately, like we said, we're – you know, kind of patiently waiting. I mean, it's almost, uh, it'll be four years this December since the last McCartney record. So we're hoping for something. We know he's been recording uh, with with Watt, Andrew Watt, and um, or Watts, and uh, we're hoping for something soon. But but today's episode, I mean, this is like, I mean, this is, you love this stuff. I mean, you, uh, my cousin David, uh, you guys are big boots, big boot fans. And uh, we're going to get into a little bit. Uh, of we're that working today. on you. I think you're getting it. Yeah. You're starting to get it, but you're not there yet. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. I mean, it's listen, it is an area that I, I need to concentrate more on. Uh, I mean, there's some really, really good stuff out there. Really good stuff out there. And that's what we're hearing now. And uh, to, to yeah. our earlier point with people passing, that's going to kind of tie us into today's show. Um, and you know what? Before before you get there, I'm really surprised that I never got more into the boots because my very first bootleg was the Black Album. Um, and if people don't know what the Black Album is, that is um, one of the bootlegs uh, surrounding the, uh, the the January 69, the Let It Be uh, slash get, get Back sessions. And man, what a bootleg that, that is. There's some fantastic fantastic stuff um i had assumed when when we met that you just automatically were were a bootleg guy so when you weren't it threw me off for a little bit i'm like he's not into these all these bootlegs and stuff i just assumed everybody who's a rabid mccartney fan would be and right right 
gravitated towards that. Yeah, I mean, I've just always been like an official guy. I've always felt like in the back of my mind, it's like, oh, I'm kind of, st- I feel like I'm stealing or something, <laughs> you know. But Thanks a uh, lot. yeah, <laughs> you know, a little conscience, uh, you know, there for you. But um, but yeah, no, I listen. Slowly getting getting more stuff, you know, cold cuts, you know, the uh, the return to Pepperland. Uh, bootleg, you know, so I'm not definitely interested in that press to play one because um, that we were talking about. And you'll show that in a second. Um, but uh, there's, I mean, listen, that that stuff, the trio of of McCartney, Jerry Murata, and um, uh, why am I dropping on his name? The 10 CC guy, Eric Stewart. Uh, yeah, Eric, thank you, Eric Stewart, that recorded all of those songs. I yeah. love that stuff because that you can get on YouTube. You can. Right, and there's so. been tons of labels that have done bootlegs over the years. Tons of labels. Um, right, and we're gonna get, and we did a show on boots, but this one's gonna be about more, today. Our show is gonna be about more recent stuff in the McCartney world of bootlegs, and in the wake of the underdubbed release of Band on the Run, which was in February. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, we got you know some recent releases that have come out, or one's out and one's not out yet, but this all stems from the estate of Jeff Emmerich. Okay, so Jeff Emmerich, who passed right. away a couple of years ago, has had, you know, a collection of acetates and reels and tapes in his in his, in his possession, and the family um, put them on, you know, for sale, and they recently got sold. And I'm going to share my screen right well, now just so you can see. Yeah, well, the- before, before we get to that real quick, I mean, how do you feel about that, and how do you think McCartney may have felt about that? You think maybe these are tapes that maybe should have been given back uh, to McCartney? Um, maybe, but Paul had the chance. To, as I said to a friend of mine, Paul knew they were going for auction. He could have he could have had okay. any of his people snap them up in two seconds. Okay, all right, true. Yeah. Which leads me to believe is Paul getting to the age where he doesn't even care anymore? Maybe, mm. maybe twenty years ago he would have. Possibly. So. I mean, he listen. He did that with the the record with the Quarrymen, with the in spite of all the danger. Yes. Right, right. Uh, you know, Duff Lowe, who recently passed away, had the record for twenty years, and Paul made him a, a, a an offer, and he got the record back. Mm. So maybe he wasn't in touch with Jeff's estate, or Jeff's estate wasn't. You know, you know. Oh, hey, we have some stuff here. Do you want it? I mean, either way, if Paul wanted it, I'm sure he could have gotten his hands on it, and the materials gotten out there. So let's just. Um, let me share the All right, screen. So what do you got? And show you the first. This is from the official auction site. Okay. All right. This was lot two eighty four. Can you see it? There you can. Yes. Okay. So. Yep. This is Omega Auctions. It was dated the tenth of October, twenty twenty three. The Beatles collection, McCartney Wings Interest Band on the Run recording tapes with Bolin recording. Two reels, quarter-inch recording tape, each with, each with 10.5 uh, diameter marked by pen, one with, with their catalog numbers containing w- uh, recordings of Wings performing tracks from Band on the Run. In original card mailer with a handwritten note, Dear George, track two, uh, side one, is too DB, too loud on this cut, slight distortion, meaning Dear George, probably Dear George Martin, we would think. Uh, and here's your tracks, tape one, Lagos, one 30-minute um Pristine studio quality, a complete Jeff Emmerich tape recording of the recordings made in September of 73 from the 3rd to the 14th at EMI in Lagos, Nigeria. With count-in talks before tracks without overdubs done in October, later in October at Air in London. Mamunia, spelled wrong. Band on the Run, Part 1 and 2. Helen Wheels, Vanderbilt. Uh, let me roll it. Tape 2. Drink to be Picasso's last words. And a Mark Poland vocal. And they even had a little sample. Of the of the of the tape that you could listen to on YouTube, and it's there. You see, it's sold for eleven thousand five hundred pounds. Wow! Wow! Hmm. So it sold recently, and now, um, you know, it it it's gotten out there. It's gotten out there in the form of two bootleg companies. Now, the first one for you Beatle bootleg collectors, Paul bootleg collectors, you'll all be familiar with the Mister Claudel label, and Mister Claudel has been a very comprehensive, thorough label of uh, boots, of which I have several, um, Tug of War, all these three CD, they're very thorough with the track listing, press to play, as Tom just mentioned, which I'm sure he likes. They're always very thorough. Um, pipes a piece, three CD, 
flaming pie, and they ju- and then they also have an off the ground one. Right and now, is there sets for every album for the most part? For the most for part, label? for the most part, not all of them, but most. So I'm gonna flash up here, and here is the most recent one. Okay. McCartney recording vault underdubbed volume one with wings. Now this looks kind of like, is it just band on the run or is it, but it's not see it's see 73 to 79 on the side here. Right. So it's not just the band on the run material. And we're going to go over that. And this one has leaked out first. This is the track listing that's on this one. Now it's kind of confusing. I think Tom, you thought it was just, just all the band on the run stuff, right? Well, Maybe because I mean we we've been in contact with other people and I think I I downloaded the wrong the wrong thing, um, was, I think I downloaded what somebody else sent us. Um, okay. I, I'm not I'm not gonna say names or anything. No like no no so, no. But yeah. Um, yeah. But same so format. I got, Go ahead. Yeah. So I got I I did get a ban on the run thing, but Jet was also included. Uh, so it was something completely different. So. But but that's right because there was only eight, no wait no seven, uh, seven should be tracks eight recorded. Yeah, I know that, but there's two Helen Wheels. But so I'm saying there should be only seven tracks recorded in Lagos. Mm-hmm. So that's true. I guess that would be that would be um, correct there for a minute. It will. But so this is a, this is a little different oh, because it's it's not as thorough when you look at the mr claudel boots they're pretty thorough in terms of what versions they are or what's different about them or what what is the mix how is it different this one's a little more vague here you know you've got you've you've got this one with the the seven tracks right off the bat you don't have picasso's last words on there and that was recorded in lot and that was recorded in lagos right okay and then you, um, let me see here. So, well, it was, see? Right there. September of 73. Where? It's there. Yeah, but that's different. Wait, where? Look. Different studio. September. Okay, go ahead. Yes, different studio. Yes, I see it. I see it now. Now I see it, yes. I see what you're saying. Go ahead. Yeah, it's there. And then, obviously, yeah. October of 73 is the, is what, what became what we got with the underdubbed release of Bend on the Run. So this October 73... That's probably a workup of all that stuff. But for me, the crown jewel of some of this stuff is what you see on discs two and three, which is Bend on the Run material and also later Wings material, you know, from Girl School, Mull of Kintyre. Now, my pro- my complaint with this one is is that they're, they're not labeled that great. So we don't know what's unique about them, right? They're just labeled Mull of Kintyre 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and they're all, all very right. different. And I've listened to just about all of this so far since I got it. It, there's some really great stuff on these second and third discs. It's probably I listen. It's what I've listened to the most, but they're not as broken down. And I'm going to show you guys something and something you know. And I'll show another screen in a little bit. But I'm going to get to another point here that I also saw online is that somebody feels that some of these mixes on disc two and three of this Mr. Claudel set of Recording Vault under Dub Number One were done using AI, which I don't. If that's okay. true, I don't have a problem with that. Why not? Because it's separating things out that you, we would not otherwise hear otherwise. And if AI was used to do that, more power AI. I can hear, you know, and I know you haven't had a chance to hear this yet, but there are some, I mean, there's a version of Mullock and Tyre on here that he, you hear harmonies that you can't even hear on any other version. Lower harmonies sung. It might have been, it might be Mullock and Tyre 4 or 5. And I said, I wish this was a little bit more detailed like the other Mr. Claudel titles were to give you some kind of an idea but they're not so same thing that goes for uh, one of the versions of london town on here you can hear just denny by himself singing the lower um verses like the verses but in a in a, in a lower tone that's just okay. buried and if ai was used to get that fine i'm fine because i'm hearing it that i'm hearing it one way that i never have before i don't know if it's true or not but this is just one, you know, you've got another version of With a Little Luck on here. Um, some great versions of Silly Love songs that you can just hear just Paul on the piano. You know, things really, really under underdubbed that we have not heard before at all. Or I haven't. Yeah, which is, which is, I mean, I, yeah, I'm, I am looking forward to hearing 
uh, some of that because of the fact that, I mean, that was one of the really cr shitty things about the Speed of Sound box set, right? Hardly anything from the recording sessions. Nothing. If, if anything. Like those, these three, these three rough mixes of silly love songs, like one didn't, one doesn't have the horns. One just has pull like those, throw those, that's right. what should have been on Speed of Sound, you know? Um, mm. So this is out there now and uh, it's, it's really enjoyable. Now coming out this go ahead. I, but here but the question then but then the, the, the second, the October of um seventy three um disc. I mean now is that what we got from the underdubbed um this February? Yes. As I understand it, now it may not be the same as that quality, but the, the stuff this is the stuff that became the basis. Are you looking at tape one here? You know, right. on disc one, that became the basis for what we got officially with with the underdubbed. Now I don't know. See, we we don't we're not privy to these conversations, but maybe Paul I had read and heard that Paul had issued the underdub because he knew that boots were in the pipeline anyway, and he wanted to stay ahead of the bootlegs getting out from the Emmerich estate, so he issued this. Which makes sense. Okay. Okay. Which which makes sense. Um you know, it's it's crazy the amount of prices people will pay for some of these things, and I'm not going to get into any of that on the show. Um, but you know, people boot like the bootleggers, and the bootleggers boot like the bootlegs. <laughs> right, right. Now, at the same time, there's another release by uh, another another bootleg label. You guys have seen this, the TM OQ Gazette, uh, otherwise known yeah. as HMC. These guys have been in the game for a long time too. And they've got a band on the run rarities set coming out. Um, so you know, here you'll find rarities, outtakes, rehearsals, tracks from the Jeff Emmerich tapes, and and more. All so these guys have been at it too. Now on this bootleg, you've got um, what well, obviously instrumental versions of all the other stuff, but some sound effects from the sessions: the jail noises, laughter, a French broadcaster, right. party noises. And you've got a little red star indicating that this came from the Jeff Emmerich tapes. So anything with the star, according to HMC, comes from Jeff Emmerich. Mamunia, Band on the Run, Helen Wheels, Vanderbilt, Let Me Roll It, No Words, Drink to Me. And then these kind of a sound effects and, and stuff like that. So I have not heard this one yet myself, um, but I'll be interested to hear it. Hmm. I mean, I know some of our fans have. And uh, if you read those forums... I mean, there are there are some people that have really kind of just gone, you know, that they're very thorough. They've listened to them all. They they know them. Um, those of you that that you know check out the forums. One of them being uh, a former co-host, Mr. David Gargolino. He's always on them. And when times like this, it's nice to jump on there and see these things because there's people that on there that are in the know or really can't say much, but they are. But they hide behind another name and they tell you basically what the breakdown is and. One of those guys, I'm sure you've all seen him before on these forums, is Mike Carrera, and mm -hmm. he already has a breakdown. He has a breakdown between the HMC, Mr. Mr. Claudel label, and which is better so far. And I will sh kind of show you a few of those um, breakdown. He just posted it today. I mean, and this is this, this is the nuances we share that 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 we that we like to read about. You know, um, mm -hmm. let's see. Now I don't know if that's viewable or not, but I'll try to just. Can you can you read it at all or not really? No, I can't read it. But I mean, if you can go, I mean, obviously you're the one controlling it. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll I'll if I can zoom in, maybe I'll zoom in. Hold on, and I can always edit this a little bit too. Hold on. Hold on. I'm gonna keep zooming in here. Let me know when you can see it. Getting there, closer. Almost there. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah. Like easier to see now? Yes. Okay, so this is a post from Mike on uh, the Beat Leg Forum, and he has done um, a breakdown of, of both. So let me just scroll back um, to – here we go. <clears throat> What's clear is doing a back-to-back -back or an A-B comparison of the same materials from the two different labels is that both are used a different source. For the ones thinking that the Mr. Claudel release will become obsolete, think twice as the most complete Lagos tape is not with HMC. This quick review was made using the original lease releases by each label. 
See, originally people thought that the HMC would be the go-to one, but now Mike, mm. who is just an awesome insider, and God, God bless him because he always gives us tips on what's coming out and when. Right. Um, he says HMC uses a copy of the tape made, choosing where to start. Uh, Mr. Claudel used a different dub of this tape, perhaps a direct copy of the Emmerich tape. There are no fade-ins or outs between songs or abrupt cold ends like with HMC. As this tape seems to continue track after track that is the longest. And then he kind of goes through each track. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Mamunia. So on HMC, it's 454. On Mr. Claudel, it's 456. You know, so th this is really kind of really grainy detail, like big time detail stuff. But when if you're a diehard collector uh, of bootlegs and you want to hear all these different nuances, this is the stuff you have to read. I mean, he's got timestamps in here at 452, HMC tape. Abruptly cuts off after Paul says something like, eh, on, while on MC. While on the Mr. Claudel, the tape doesn't cut, and the hiss noise continues three more seconds. This is really, really in-depth breakdown stuff. Somebody who has a lot more time than I do to do this stuff for you, but it's all in here. Differences between Ben on the Run, the times, what's different here. HMC ends abruptly at 512 during Paul's ahs, while on Mr. Claudel, we hear the complete ah. And you can still hear two extra bass notes and the nose of the tape until the end. So this is really deep dive stuff to to listen to and, and dissect. But I think a lot of I think a lot of McCartney fans are they're into it. Right. Interesting. It's a whole other it's a whole other mm. world of like I mean I mean there's a guy that just went through and did a breakdown of both new bootlegs that are out there and telling you what's available. And I think it's so coveted is because it's banned on the run. We don't have a lot. From Band on the Run, as we know. No, oh, right. Yeah, and obviously we would love to hear that those initial, um, uh, you know, sessions with uh, with Denny and Henry. Um, as Henry would say that he thinks those versions are the some far superior versions. But uh, I don't think we'll ever hear those. We won't. But it's an interesting. It's interesting to look at, and as time moves on with bootlegs, as people pass on. Things like this, estate sales will happen. Things will trickle out, and how much of a how much of a wall gets put up by MPL and Paul to stop these things from getting out there? You know, um, clearly there's people that want. You know, we as fans want every little thing. We want to snap our fingers up and have everything, whether it's the 1963 copyright dump from the Beatles or or anything like this. Um, and I think it's frustrating because we know how much Paul has in the vaults too. Mm. True, true. So then, so what we have then right now? What what's the show? The CD set that you have right now, a band, yeah. the band on the run. Um, so it's this one right here. Yeah. Okay. That's what you have right now. So you've got um, you've got. I mean, like, go show the track listing again, please. Yeah. So you're looking at uh, Mamunia number. You know, take this. I guess that's take one. Or band on well, the we run, don't know, one. and that's what some of the people on the forum know. said is yeah. like they're not. They're just labeled Mamunia 1, Band on the Run 1, okay. Helen Wheels number 1, Take 2, Helen Wheels number 2, Take 3. It's a little vague, you know? Okay, right, right. It's a little vague, so but... I'm curious. Go ahead. Yeah, so, cause I'm, cause I'm curious, because we, we, we were given a no words from someone. I'm kind of curious if that September 73 is the, then the same version then of the what we were given. Um, well, that it's version it's, it's, that we heard was about a seven-minute... It was about a seven-minute version of No Words. And, no, and then, then this one, will, I think, was cut down in like four minutes or something then? Four, four seventeen, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. So then, no, it wouldn't have been. I mean, it could have been taken from that initial, because it was just a jam. Right. And then cut down. That went on and on and on and on and on. Um, right. Right. So there's there's a lot of, there are a lot of good things on here. Um, I just wish it was a little more thorough, but... I mean, I have friends of mine who have heard this already, and they're like, this is on par for being one of the best McCartney bootlegs ever. Like, they put it up there with the last flight. Okay. Well, then, I mean, they don't have to be necessarily thorough on the back there, but, I mean, is there a booklet where it can be more thorough? Yes, there is. Okay. I, I'm sure there is. Mm. Um, but, I mean, this is, you know, we're not promoting the sale of bootlegs at all because, you know, that's just not that's not what we're doing. The stuff's out there. So, you you, you know, it, it's the Internet. You can find these things. 
but we, you know, and people have said, oh, well, you know, people spent a lot of time and money on these things and, you know, let, 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 let the person recoup some of their funds before it just gets out there. But one, you know, that's not going to happen. Once something like that is out there, it's going to be available. Right. It's a, it's a touchy it's phys- subject. Whether it's phys- physical or digital, it'll still be out there. It's going to be out there. It's going to be out there for sure. Um, I think we're better off having it than not having it. This some of this stuff because we wouldn't have heard it otherwise. And and and, and I'm, I uh, you know, I think you really, I think you're going to enjoy hearing some of this stuff. Like, you know, and it's 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 basically what Paul was doing with the underdog with Band on the Run, but mm-hmm. but but better, I think. And then you hear some of these other tracks. You hear Jet differently. There's that that Good Night Tonight number one. That's incredible. It's like seven minutes, and it's just a rough. It's an it's a rough mix. His vocal, it's a scratch vocal. It sounds great. Same thing with London what about Town. The, uh, was there a uh, okay? All right, never mind. I'm I'm thinking of the other one, but uh, but yeah, this is I mean, but the the but then the thing is is why weren't those like the rough mixes of of the band on the run stuff put on with the other stuff you know what i mean with the disc one unless they just ran out of time you know what well I mean? you got 18 it's, tracks it's, here on disc one yeah, yeah so they might have I mean, why why not yeah why just put why scatter the band on the run material across the other two discs is what you're saying yeah i mean why why don't you just then just i mean because there's an obviously i mean there's oriental nightfish uh stuff out there that they could have added on 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 here um, you know, obviously you, you've got plenty of Helen wheels on. You could have just made this a two disc set and then just kept it, kept it just band, band on, on the run. run and then make another release right. of later wing stuff. Right. Fair enough. Fair enough. But maybe they wanted to do it as the Emmerich thing. And because that's, and you got a picture down here of Paul, Jeff Emmerich. And right. I want to say that looks like John Jacobs, uh, okay. the, the fair engineer enough. that Paul used in the eighties and into the nineties. Right. Sometimes I think that's John right. Jacobs. Obviously, Paul, okay. Linder, and Denny here. Um, another gem that I heard on this on disc too. I'm Tom. I'm sure you've heard it. The original demo of "With a Little Luck" with Paul, with just the backing track, the mm-hmm. the, the drum machine. Have you heard that? No, no. I'm so sure. that's you, why I mean, yeah, I'm really looking forward to listening. So that that there's a version of "With a Little Luck" that I've had in my collection for decades, right? It's just Paul and a drum machine for six minutes, just a drum machine and his bass doing uh, the demo and it's in, been in okay quality on this set the quality of that demo is is like it's the clearest thing i've ever heard so you know this really came from uh, the estate because the it's not a bootleg this was the real tape and the quality of that with a little luck demo which i've had again for decades in muddied quality now sounds pristine clear like like it was made today so that that's the differences with some of this the quality of this of this source material coming from the Emmerich estate. So I think, okay. I think, you know, I think you're going to, once you dive in with this stuff, brother, you can find yourself very quickly down a rabbit hole. And I think you'll think, I think you really like it. I think you will. Fair enough. You know, and, um, I'm, I'm very curious to our fans out there who have might've heard this, some of this stuff or have, what's your take on some of this, this stuff and boots in general, you know, it's a pretty, it's, it's pretty hot. It's a pretty hot topic. I've seen it on 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 multiple Hoffman forum, B leg. It's it's getting a lot of steam on there, and I, I think we're better for it. And if AI has helped us, especially in the case of Mr. Claudel, for the separation of vocals on stuff like Mull of Kintyre, then I think I I, I think more power right. to you. Well, I mean AI is still, you know, I mean it's very controversial. I mean there there it's been con. Has there's been controversy over the fact that AI was used on some of these recent um, uh, Blu-ray releases of Jane Cameron's films, uh, True Lies, uh, Aliens, and and The Abyss? Uh, obviously, you know AI. You know they've they've there's there's been strikes in the, in Hollywood over over AI and the use of that. But I mean, if we weren't, I, I mean, I guess if if AI if they're using AI to separate it, and then they're kind of like then then you know, lifting things that weren't initially supposed to be lifted in the first place. You know what I mean? So if they're like you said, the backing vocals or stuff like that, they're separating everything kind of like what Peter Jackson did for the, for the red and blue. Right. I mean, obviously I think some people had problems with that. Maybe some people didn't have problems with that, but for these, you shouldn't need AI. I don't think for, for stuff that's been, well, you're probably on eight tracks, right? 
mm. um, these, these the, the band on the run sessions. So you shouldn't have had to have needed AI to separate this stuff. I don't think. Well, think about it. Tapes that are fifty year that are fifty years old. You know, you might have to. Okay. Yeah. See, I mean, this is again, this is a world that I just I, I'm still relatively you know new at. So I really don't know the right questions to ask for for this stuff to begin with. Um, but I'm, I'm glad oh, to, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm ready to learn about this stuff. So I think, I think you should, because it's all it really at the end of the day is we're hearing the music that we've always loved in a different way. I mean, I was driving the other day, listening to some of this stuff and I'm like, I've heard Mull of Kintyre 50 times. I've never heard that vocal because it's buried, you know, things like that. All these guys going, well, like it's, it's like, a, it's like the, it's the harmonies, but it's like lower. Same thing with London town. I mean, there's song, these are right. songs we can recite in our sleep. And to hear it in right. a new way, that's pretty important in 2024. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's a bootleg. I don't condone the sale of bootlegs. I'm not boot, I'm not giving my money to the bootleggers. The stuff's out there. Okay? It is what it is. But we as fans are richer because we have this stuff. Because it's, in our, it's what we want. I get that. Yeah, I get that. I definitely get it. I mean, I just question the use of AI in general. That's all I'm doing is, I mean, because you, again, if you're, if you're doing something with it, like, like the American albums, right? The, the, the American Beatles, albums, that's not what they, how they intended it, those records to be heard, you know? So then AI, you bring an AI in to, to utilize that technology to make us hear things that we weren't supposed to hear to begin with, I guess, I guess, you know, there are pros and cons to thinking yeah. about what you said. It, that is fair. Like, you know, did Paul really want us to de deconstruct these tracks, track by track, to hear everything? Mm. Probably not. But, I mean, these are stems. Like, look at the Beatles rock band stems that came out, you know, when rock band right. came out in 2009. People went gaga about that. You know, to be able to take right. those tracks and mix them the way you want. I mean, and that was the Beatles stuff because people could do right. that. And I know McCartney's had on his own website, right, a mixing where you can mix a song. You can fade stuff in, fade stuff out. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, I mean, I can understand that too. So, right. If so, if that was being done with the Beatles material, you know, uh, 13, 14 years ago, you you know what's going to happen, you know, now with with some of his. I just as, as the you know, that was two thousand nine when Rock Band came. Those themes, those stems came out. Here it's two twelve two thousand twenty four. It's fifteen years later. So of course they're going to if the technology is improved to hear some of this material. I say more power to you. Let let's hear it in a new way. Some sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's like, eh, but other times it's great. And if if it can be used to enhance the music, great. I just think what we all want is to hear these things unvarnished. Like what's really in the vaults, and let's get it out there because we know it's there. Like let's hear that. De let's hear that demo of daytime, nighttime suffering without anything touching it. Let's just hear that. That's what we. That's what we want. Mm -hmm. You know. Right. Well, I mean, the stuff that I would really want is is like how Paul was, was was talked about. Like, if he would go, like, maybe I'm amazed. You're sitting there. He's just at the piano and the vocals, and that's it. Like that stuff that I want to hear. And then, and then, you know, and then, you know, the, the next week he'll overdub the bass, right? Then he'll overdub the drums. Um, you know, stuff like that. I don't want to hear the track, and then just have something faded up or fading down. You know, what you want to hear the if track. Recording, you if you if I want to hear yeah I want if I want to hear track one and track two which is the piano and, and the vocals then I just want that I mean I don't I don't want like the whole track and then just someone fading down the vocals right you, you know want I mean? you want the stem so like kind of deconstructing right. the, the the classics like we just did with Alan Cozen if you had if you had eight track if you had maybe I'm amazed across eight tracks in your iTunes library or on your computer you'd have maybe I'm amazed right piano right bass, vocal, and you can go through it and listen to those eight tracks individually. And that's how you, that's what you could do with the Beatles rock band stems. You could just hear with a little help of my friend's piano or whatever. And I think that's kind of what you're saying, which you'd rather have with a McCartney song, right? Right. Right. I mean, I haven't seen too much of that yet available, but I mean, who knows what's coming I mean, That's out. one of the great things that I love about the, the, the Lennon stuff. Oh. You know, getting all those different, you know, the isolated tracks and stuff like that. That's and the right, elements, you know, well, the, the progression yeah, of the, the elements, song from right. a demo Correct. to the elements Correct. to this to that. Well, they have set the standard with how yes. to how to show you 
the genesis and the evolution of a song on these right. box sets, right? Right. I mean, what they did with, you know, it's just for with the Plastic Ono band and the evolution of uh, I Don't Want to Be a Soldier. No, I'm sorry, Imagine. I Don't Want to Be a Soldier. I mean, look at the transformation that that had from 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 take to take. I mean, that 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 track, I mean, I really um although it's it, it was realized, I mean, there was different um different um what what's the word I'm looking for? Um arrangements uh on on you know, on you know, you know from 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 uh take to take. So, uh, that's the kind of stuff that I like to hear. Yeah, and and it's so frustrating because McCartney has such a probably such a treasure trove of all this stuff. And all we get is like a couple of kernels on a box set, like to your earlier point of speed of sound. Like right. this stuff on this new set could have been on right. there. Let's hear so let's hear three versions of Silly Loves Tongues without the brass or just the single like, track vocal. What's like what was the album that he's he's helped him and George stop from having released uh in the mid eighties? Um Oh the Sessions bootleg. The Sessions bootleg, yeah. Which was right. that had a catalog number and everything. It was ready to go. Yeah. Right, right, uh, and saying you know what would they you know they only wanted the best stuff released, right? The finished product is what is the only thing that we were supposed to hear, right? Everything else is scraping the bottom of the barrel. So, which uh, I'll never believe that that that's the case. Maybe with the Beatles, but not but not with Paul Solo. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, listen, I I mean, look, this this is something that I really should start paying att more attention to um, these these bootlegs and and um you know hearing these earlier takes and stuff like that so i am definitely going to make it a purpose to uh, start checking this stuff out i think you, i think it's good because i think you'll you'll get a new appreciation for it and be like oh my god i never noticed that before or or that's so that sounds so cool it's so it's it's a new way to hear a song that you've, did, you you know backwards and forwards and you, you right. can get a new appreciation for some of this material and I, a lot of it we owe to the emmerich estate uh and the people that you know that, that made that happen to, to get it out there i mean you know there's a really funky uh great take a girl school um which i believe is the one on disc three um which is totally loose and different i think it's girl school take two totally different vibe totally different vibe things like that we never heard before and there's no ai with that like that's just that was just sitting in the guy's vaults you know what i'm saying some of this other stuff you know right. Junior's Farm, uh, the Ernie Winfrey mix, I've, I've, that's been out there for a while. A um, couple of these different 1985s, you know, just as good as the ones on the underdub, if not better. So I am, I am very curious. Uh, those, those of you out there that have either that have uh, acquired these in however manner you have, what are your thoughts on these boots uh, that that are out there? If you've got both of them, I think they're a worthy addition to any McCartney collection uh, live, you know, of music. Because it's it's new stuff, and let us know. Let us know in the comments uh, if you've gotten them and what more you want to see come out, or what else. What else do you hear about coming out in the pipeline? Because there's a lot more people to know than us uh, out there about this stuff, and all of a sudden it'll be out there. So that's it. Check it out oh, there. It's, I, I don't expect anybody telling us what what else is coming. <laughs> um, you, you never know. know. You know. You if, never they, know. if they did know, if they did know. So, I mean, obviously, I mean, there's got to be some kind of a little bit of hush hush to these releases, too, don't you think? Of course, of course. And again, we're we're waiting on an announcement of some kind of Paul's. So by the time this drops, um, it may have already been out there. It may not. We'll see. Um, you know, we're, we're doing something a little bit different for this one. We are dropping it uh, on Saturday, the first Saturday of the month, because this is a little bit of a newer uh, hotbed topic in the McCartney kind of collecting community of, of especially of bootlegs. So we normally don't drop a show the first Saturday, but we did drop this one um, the first Saturday of the month. So don't know if that's going to change because we're not going to do anything the second week of the month, the second uh, weekend of the month. We got to see how our schedules jive with that. Right. Uh, maybe we'll take that weekend off since we dropped one instead. We shall see that uh, Tom's Tom's got a busy plate and he's got a lot of driving to do. Don't you partner? Yeah, another cross country trip coming up real soon. Yes. Yeah. Uh, should be fun. Should be fun. Okay. Anything else in the pipeline well, there, Mister Hunyadi? Before we close well, it out, we did. Uh, well, we did talk more talk again. We 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 did the first half of the uh, Rob Sheffield 
uh, 100 uh, solo Beatles uh, list. And um, look, we had a lot of we had a lot of requests to, to do the show. And, um, you know, obviously it's his opinion. We know that uh, we're just giving our thoughts and opinions on, on the songs and the choices that he made uh, for his list. And, um, you know, we love talking about the music anyway, so no big deal. It's what you guys do well, man, for over almost over five years running now, right? Yeah, 2018. Wow. Yeah. Wow. We started with uh, we started with a review of Egypt Station. <laughs> All those years ago. That that's what we'll, we'll do part two, in uh, you know two weeks, and um, uh, we've got other other plans uh, as well. Other yep. Than that. And we do it two likes too. We will have um, Chip and Mark will join us again at some point. They were going to join us uh, for this episode, but they were not available to do this tonight. So we will have them on later in the spring or early summer. Um, and that show is we're going to kind of do a show about, um, you know, the 82, 83, 84 period of Paul, basically working with right. George Martin, um, Tug of War, Pipes of Peace, and culminating with Broad Street. And we all stand together kind of coming out of the end of that. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to do that with Chip and Mark uh, probably in about two months' time. And they'll hop on for that one at, at a later date. We are almost at uh, 2,000 subs. We're at 1.95. So please, please make more Google accounts and just get us to that. Get us across that threshold, will you, please? <laughs> please do that. And uh, But we are available everywhere else, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Two Legs Podcast. Please check us out. Uh, on all those platforms as well. It's also available on any audio platform for podcasting as well. If you like the audio, end of the show. So that's going to do it for 243. For my partner, Thomas Hunyadi, I am Andy Nichols, and we will see you next time on Two Legs. Peace out. Take care. to Two Legs, a Paul McCartney podcast, hosted by Tom Hunyadi and Andy Nichols, with musical contributions by Dylan.